So today we're going to solve multi-step equations by using inverse operations. First, what's an operation in math? What's one operation in math? Multiplication, yeah. Is that what you said, multiplication? Addition, that works too. Multiplication is another one. What's another one? Division, subtraction, right? There's four, there's four operations. What do I mean? What's inverse mean? Opposite, opposite. So if I say addition, what's the inverse? If I say multiplication, what's the inverse? You guys got it. You guys got it. Isolate the variable. What does isolate mean? Get it alone by itself, right? Get it alone by itself. So isolate the variable means get the letter by itself. Okay, so these are the steps we use. Distribute if needed. Distributive property. You guys have done that many, many times. What operation do we do with distributive property? Parentheses, what do we do? It Multiplication, right? We use the little kind of the little rainbow things. It means multiplication, good. Combine like terms, anything that's the same, we put together, use inverse operations, just like you guys just said, get the variable by itself. Okay, sometimes we're gonna use all of those steps. Sometimes we're only gonna use two of the steps, three of the steps, one step. Okay, so the first thing I always do, like I said, if you have another method, go for it. I don't want to teach you a new way to do it if you know how to do it, but this is the way I do it. I always start with a line down the, it's not necessarily down the middle. Sometimes it's not in the middle. It's always on the equal sign because you have your left side, you got your right side. So let's start the first step. Are there parentheses to do distributive? No, no. So skip that step. Is there anything, so that is the same on this, on, gosh, I forgot the announcements ago. We'll do announcements at the end of the period. We'll finish early. Um, on the left side, are these two like terms? Can I combine them and make negative two? No, no, right? One doesn't have an X. 10 doesn't have an X, so I can't do that. How about on this side? No, right? Can't subtract them. So I can't do step two either. But what I can do is get the thing, get the X's on the same side, right? I have an eight X on the left side. I have a four X on the right side. To get them together, I have to use the opposite operation, right? So usually I start with the smaller one. Four X is smaller than eight X. So is this guy positive or negative? So what's the opposite operation? Subtract or negative, right? Subtract negative means the same thing. So 4x minus 4x makes 0, so I'm just going to cross it out. 8x minus 4x, those are like terms now, so I can subtract them. Bring everything you haven't used down. I still have a negative 10. I still got a minus 30. Okay. So now I need to get X's on one side, isolate it. So now the negative 10, I got to get rid of the negative 10 or move it. To do that, I need to do the opposite. Add 10 to both sides, add 10 to both sides. Negative 30 plus 10 is negative 20. So I got X's on the one side. I got everything without an X on the other side. Last step, isolate. How do I get the, the four and the X split up? Division, right? How do I know that? Because what is four and X doing? They're stuck together. If numbers and letters are stuck together, it's always multiplication. So to do the opposite, Instead of multiplying by four, I'm going to divide by four. What is four divided by four? One. Four goes into negative 20, negative five times, you're done. Okay. All right. Okay, so now let's turn it over and let's look at B. Each of these are a little bit different little bit different.
Okay, first thing I do, draw the line. Okay. How is this one different than the last one I just did? Joseph? What's the big thing that's like, yeah? Uh, the fraction. It's a fraction, right? The fraction. If that fraction wasn't there, if I could cover up that fraction part, this would be an easy problem, right? That's the part that's kind of throwing it for a loop. Well, are there any parentheses? No, so I don't got to worry about that. But I do want to get rid of that divided by 20. I just said it. I was going to say, what does that mean? Divided by 20, right? How do I inverse divided by 20? So that's what you're going to do. You're going to multiply both sides by 20. You're going to say 20 times and 20 times. Try to use the dot for multiplication. Don't use the X, because then if you have an X and an X, it becomes confusing. Try to use the dot from now on for multiplication so it doesn't get too confusing. Okay. Well, I had divided by 20 before. Over here, I had divided by 20. If I do the opposite, those simplify. What do they simplify down? To 1. The other side becomes negative 20. Because 1, negative 1 times 20 is negative 20. So I have 2x plus 3. If I multiply anything times 1, does that change it? If I divide it by 1, does that change it? So I'm just going to write 2x plus 3. I'm not going to worry about the 1s because I'm multiplying times 1 and dividing by 1. That doesn't do anything. That doesn't change it. Now, finish it up. Subtract 3 from both sides. Divide by 2. Uh-oh. 2 goes into negative 23 not evenly, right? So this is what you do. Can I reduce 23 and 2? Like, can I divide them both by 2 or 3 or 4 or 5? Can I reduce the fraction? No, right? So leave it alone. Leave it alone. Can you change it to a decimal? Yeah, but there's no reason to. Just reduce the fraction as far as you can, and then you're done. So does this mean I did it wrong if I didn't get a number? No, no, that's life. That's life. If I go down to the corner store over here across the street and I buy a soda, it's not going to be like a dollar or two dollars. It's going to be like a dollar and change, two dollars and change. That's life, right? That's life. So doesn't mean you did anything wrong. Okay, so if you get an answer that's not a perfect pretty number, don't worry about it. Okay, just make sure you did it right. All right, let's look at C now. Let's look at C. Now the equal sign is not in the middle. But I still draw a line. Still draw a line. Step one. Distribute. Do I, is there parentheses here? Yeah. So I got to do distribute property. So I'm going to do my little rainbows. We said before, when we distribute, that means multiplication. So I'm going to multiply the negative 2 in front times first negative 3. So what is negative 2 times negative 3? Positive 6, right? Positive 6. X. What is negative 2 times negative 2? Positive 4, so plus 4. Everything else stays the same. I haven't touched anything else. No more parentheses. I'm done with that step. Do I have any like terms on the same side of the blue? Yeah. On the left side, I got a bunch of stuff that I can combine. First thing I can combine is x. What do I get when I combine 6x and negative 5? 
positive 1x. 1x or just x, right? Good. I also got something else. I got a positive 4 and a positive 3. What do I get when I combine those? Positive 7. Good. What's the last step? So I got, I, I'll go, almost got x by itself, right? Yeah, that plus 7 is the only thing ruining it. So what's the opposite of plus 7? Minus 7. Good. Okay, so I got, a, I got a quick question before we go on to the next one. Quick question. The yellow and the yellow and the orange. I didn't do the opposite. Like I didn't go, I didn't have to change 6x to negative. I didn't have to change negative 5x to positive. Should I have? No, why not? Because they're on the same side. They're on the same side. I had to with seven, with positive seven, minus seven, because I went across. Anytime you go across the blue line, you got to do the opposite. But if you're not going across the blue line, you don't have to do the opposite. Okay. All right. So letter D on the other side, do letter D on your own. Try letter D on your own. It's very similar. Try it out. If you get it wrong, big deal. If you get it right, great. We're learning right now. Okay. We're learning right now. So if you get it wrong, I'll do it in a second, but I wanted you guys to give it a try because I think you guys, it's very similar. Okay, so the first step, distribute. Negative 5 times x is just negative 5x. Negative 5 times negative 3 is positive 15. No more parentheses. Combine like terms that are on the same side. Same thing like last time. I got a couple that I need to combine. They're on the same side, so I'm not going to need to do the opposite. So what do I get when I combine negative 5x and negative 3x? negative 8x. There you go. And then I need to combine positive 15 and negative 2 plus 13. Good. Didn't need to do the opposite because same side. Okay. But 13, so I got the x's over here. I got the x's on the left side. That's with a negative 8x, but I need to get 13 away from that. So I got to do the opposite. Yep, subtract. Last step, divide by negative 8. Okay.
Okay, so there's one more problem on this paper, and then I'm going to give you another practice problem. I'll show you where to show you where we're going to do the practice problem, then we're done. So two more problems, then we're done. Okay, we'll tape in the notes. I'll give you your bathroom passes because I haven't given to those two yet, and they will be done. So letter E. Blue line. It's got parentheses, but what's the problem? Why is it kind of like, uh? I mean, we'd have to multiply a fraction. Yeah, it's a fraction, right? We got a fraction. We got a fraction like we did earlier, right? Well, what did I do earlier to get rid of the fraction? Exactly. It was divided by 20, right? What is this one got divided by? So let me just multiply by 2. I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. Multiply both sides by 2. So I have a divided by 2 and a multiplied by 2. That makes 1. 7 over 1? Just 7. Okay, you can do that when the fraction is multiplying or dividing by everything. Okay. Now, simple, more of a simple problem, right? So distributive property. We got 35x plus 42. Subtract 42. Last step, get x by itself. So I get x equals negative 38 over 35. Well, if I put that in my calculator, I get a decimal. So I don't want to do that. So can I reduce 38 over 35? Is there something I could divide both of them by? 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I don't think so. 5 goes into the bottom, not the top. 2 goes into the top, not the bottom. 7 goes into the bottom, not the top. So we're done. Leave it like that. Don't turn it to a decimal because then you got to round it. We don't like to round. Don't round if you, unless you need to. Okay, so... I'm going to give you one more practice problem to do. Where are you going to put it? I ran out of space. This is what you're going to do. So today, later today, you're going to tape it in there, right? You're going to tape it in page five. We said we're going to tape it in page five. Well, you're only going to tape the top. You're going to leave the flap open. So what you're going to do is you're going to do on page five, you're going to do this one more problem. Okay? And then when I pass out the tape, you tape it in over it. And you're done. Okay, so do this on page five. Okay. Call me as I... Okay, so here we go. Call this letter F. Since the last one we did was letter E, this is F. Same directions. Give it a shot. If you mess it, if you if you make a mistake, I'll tell you the answer right now, so you know if you're right or wrong. The answer is positive one. The answer is positive one. So if you get positive one as an answer, you probably did it right. If 
you didn't, I'll do it. I'll do it in about three minutes. They'll say, oh, 6x is in front, distribute 6x. No, what's immediately in front? The negative, right? So what's with the negative that we don't write? Negative one, right? So really there's a negative one there. That's what you're gonna distribute, yeah. That's what you're gonna distribute. Okay, and then go from there. Okay, so when you distribute the negative one we talked about, you're going to get six, negative four is going to stay on the left. 6x minus 2x plus 1 minus 9. So I need to combine some like terms on the right side. When I combine those, I get positive 4x. And then I need to combine the other side, or the other things on there. I get negative 8. OK. X's, this time I have x on the right. It's OK. You can have x on the right, as long as it's on one side by itself at the end. So I subtract 8 from both sides. I get positive 4 over here. Divided by 4. Are my answers the same? So I told you guys this was the answer up here in green. Down here in pink, are those the same? Does it matter if you have the x on the left or x on the right? No. Nope. Yep, doesn't matter at all. As long as you have an x equals and a 1, positive 1. Now, if I change that 1 to a negative, then I got a different, then I didn't do it right. Okay? Good. Okay, so now what you're going to do. So if you're at the end of the row, or behind. So if you're if you're the last one of the last people here, go get some tape. They're on top of the it's on the top of the Chromebook cart. Just get some tape for your for your two rows or your two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there should be four. One for this group, one for this group, one for this group, and one for that group. So you're gonna tape two things in. First thing you're going to tape is your notes into page five. Make sure you don't tape it shut so you can open it up and then you can flip it open. Okay, so just tape one side on top. The other thing is your bathroom pass. You're going to tape that into the front cover. You're going to tape that into the front cover. Your bathroom pass is never going to leave your notebook until the last day of the semester when I say pass them up for so I can put them in the grade book. Okay. So once you're done with the tape, you can pass it to the next person and eventually it'll get to everyone. 